Hello, my name is Carolina. This is Carolina's Closet. And in 2023, I will be crocheting a sandwich blanket. So let me tell you my plans, and maybe you can crochet a temperature blanket with me this year. Come on, let's do this. So uh, let me very brief briefly explain what a temperature blanket is. If you've never heard about it, I'll just kind of quickly summarize. Basically, it's very straightforward. It's a big blanket that you create daily, or it's supposed to be like a daily log of the temperature of the day. So I have a little chart with um, a color that represents um, a specific temperature range. And every day, the day has a temperature, you write that down, you annotate that, and you <laughs> go to the color that represents that temperature, and you um, crochet a row. And, you know, every day there's a row in a different color that represents the temperature of the day. And then at the end of the year, you have a big 365 row blanket that is a log of the temperature of every day. It usually looks really nice, it looks like a, a nice gradient, you know, there's a patch of like um, colors that represent the winter and then there's a patch of colors that represent the summer. It looks really nice um, and that's the essence of it. Um, there's a few videos here online explaining very well about how to do it and there's also a lot of inspiration on Pinterest and everywhere else where you can find a crochet community. This is a very common project, is by no means a original idea for me. Um, and yeah, usually people, originally I guess, people did a lot of like rainbow colors, so the, um, the high temperatures are like reds and oranges, and the low temperatures are like blues and purples, and all the mid temperatures go from red to blue on like a rainbow fashion. Uh, but recently I've been seeing people doing it in a bunch of different like color ranges and people do pastels which I find very beautiful. Um, you can do gray scales so from black to white. Um, you can choose different te textures for different um, ranges. Just be sure that the yarn that you buy you have a great availability for it either on the store that you go to or online and have a little chart with the temperature um, range of for each color and a way to like annotate the temperatures for every day and that's kind of the base of it. Um, I feel like it is, it is originally like a daily log, like a daily project, but I feel like most people don't have the time or don't get to do it every day. So a lot of people will batch create, they will do it at the end of the week, they will have annotated the, the temperatures for each day and they will batch crochet or batch knit in the end of the week or at the end of 14 days a month. I've seen people doing historical temperature blankets as well. That's when you go on a temperature website, they're very easily available. I can link one down below. And you go on a specific year, maybe the year that your kids were born, maybe the year that you were born, maybe a specific year in your life. And you annotate all the temperatures of that year that you can find online and you will do this temperature crochet, but um, looking back. So you already have all of the dates and all of the temperatures. That's that that one's a good one to buy yarn so that you have like a general idea of like how much yarn you need in every single color. But that's it about temperature blankets. They usually have a, a specific look to it and made in rolls, but I've been seeing people doing it differently. So like maybe granny square crochets, um, like granny squares or a gigantic granny square. People do different stitches that they like, like specific stitches, maybe wavy, like wave stitches, things like that. People have been innovating in it as well as like in the colors, also in the patterns. Um, and that's kind of the premise of it, like the, the overall idea of a temperature blanket. So about me and my desires with this um, temperature blanket. So when it comes to crochet, I'm definitely not like an expert on it or anything like that. I feel like a crochet temperature blanket can be a beginner project, um, but it also like it requires a lot of commitment, like year long commitment. So it's not like a fast thing that you just start and finish like in a couple of days and you have it done and you feel so proud of it. It's definitely like a long burn, like a long project. So if you're someone who likes to do the kind of stuff that drags along, it can be for you. It's, I feel like it's very good for practice and like just getting used to like the act of crochet. Um, in theory, I guess I've never done one. I have done a few projects in crochet. I just started crocheting this year, so like 2022. I did like a couple of tops and I did a big crochet pen. So basically, I have had a lot of experience with crochet, but I don't have a lot to show for it because I tend to use thin yarn. And thin yarn is just something that just takes a lot of time to be done. 
but I want to get to crochet more this next year. And I am someone who tries in routine. I'm very good with routines. And I love getting into new routines. And I want to give myself a little bit of time to do something crafty every single day. So I feel like a temperature blanket is really good for that because I get to log in, I get to do it every single day. And at the end of the year, I have a nice big project and I don't need to commit a lot of time to it. Um, and I also want to log something every day. I really want to do this something where I film or like photograph something every single day. And at the end of the year, I get to look back at it. And I feel like if I'm doing the same thing every day, it's nice to like compare and contrast to like, what are my thoughts and opinions about this? now in like the end of December and what would be my thoughts and opinions about it in March or in May or in June so I really want to be logging this and filming this either here on YouTube or on TikTok or shorts or um, on reels some form of like recording and posting it online so that I have some people to maybe keep me accountable for it um, online and I want to have this with this temperature blanket so this is the whole reason why I'm doing it as well as like just having a very nice blanket um, at the end of the year so let me tell you about my pattern you might have seen in the thumbnail or something like that. I'm not doing the normal stripe one because I just, that doesn't motivate me that much. You know, I just explained how the normal one goes, like the stripes one. But, and I love seeing it. I love seeing people do it. Like, it looks nice, you know, to see the gradient of colors done at the end of a year. But that doesn't inspire me that much. I feel like I'll be very bored of just doing a straight line every single day for the whole year. So I decided to come up with a hexagon blanket idea. So I went on Pinterest to like research crochet blankets just to see some ideas. And I saw these hexagon crochet blankets and I absolutely love them. They look so nice. And I had never done a hexagon before, but I just find it such a nice shape on, on crochet. So I was like, I think I want to try and do this blanket with a hexagon pattern so I went online and I researched this specific um, pattern it's called an African flower um, this is how I see it being called um, if there's any other name for this pattern let me know um, I researched on Google on YouTube and I saw someone teaching it I'll link it down below the video that I used to learn how to do this and I use just the yarn that I have laying around. I usually have a very thin yarn laying around because I do knit. I knit in a knitting machine. It's like my main form of like creation and design when it comes to clothing. So I, I love having thin yarn around because I get to use it in a knitting machine as well. Um, and I learned how to do this and I loved it. It's not too hard. It doesn't take me too long. So basically the first one that I did, I think it was this one. It took me like 45 to 15 minutes, I think, but I was learning it. And then when I did it by myself, this one and this one, it took me like 30 minutes-ish to do each. And I feel like that's a good amount of time for me to be crocheting for a day. I know that it doesn't look like much, you know, to spend 30 minutes in this, but I use an extremely thin yarn with a very tiny hook. I use a uh, 1.75 millimeter hook this is just me I like using thin yarn I'm comfortable with it and I'm sure that I'm going to use the things that I do with a thin yarn more that I would use things that are made with a thicker yarn so it's just my preference but I don't advise it truly don't like if you're beginning or even if you're not beginning I do not recommend thin yarn for anyone it's just a, a me thing I love using thin yarn but I I'm aware that it takes longer to do anything and it's it's very like time consuming. It's just how I like to do things. So I made these and I was very satisfied with how it looks and with the yarn that I chose. It's the yarn that I use for most things that I do. Um, so yeah, I decided this is what I was going to do. So the next thing that I did, I went on a website that I usually buy yarn and I saw all the color options that they had for this yarn that I wanted to use. Originally, I wanted to go from a green to a pink. That was like the kind of color range that I wanted to do. So like dark pink, all the way to light pink, oh, dark uh, green, all the way to light green, and then start at a light pink, and then go all the way to a dark pink. That was like the original range that I wanted to. They didn't have as many greens, as many pinks as I wanted. So I incorporated a little bit of blue and a little bit of um, purple, to make 
to have the amount of colors that I wanted to have. And I chose the colors based on what they had available on the website um, for this yarn. This is a very easily available yarn. Like they usually have it in physical stores and in websites here where I live. So that's something that you have to take into consideration if you're doing a big project, being a temperature blanket or anything like that. Be sure that they have similar, um, they have the yarn available to you. With a temperature blanket, I don't think lot um, like badges because usually when they change the lot the dye might change a little bit and it might look a little bit darker a little bit lighter um, usually it is a problem for clothing items but if you're just doing a temperature blanket it's a year-long project it shouldn't be that much of an issue but if you that if that's something that's going to bother you a lot buy a couple of skeins of yarn for each color that might be way more expensive and you're probably not going to use a whole skein of yarn for most colors um, anyway this is how I, you know, made, came up with my color chart and my yarns, like my yarn choice. When it comes to like the actual design, you might be seeing it and you're like, Bestie, this is four colors. A temperature blanket is one color per day. What are you doing? You're very wrong. And to that I say, first of all, just be comfortable with your design. Do whatever suits you and your needs because it doesn't matter. It's for you. But what, why I chose to do four colors is because uh, I find it boring <laughs> to do only one color. So basically, my designs are going to go like this. The middle color is the low temperature of every single day. The middle color is two rows and that creates the paddles. It's going to be the current color of the time that I am crocheting. So I hope to do this every single day and I don't know if I'm going to do this at every single time or if I'm going to have be doing this in different times. I'll have to see as the year goes, but I want to be crocheting this of the like being the color of the exact time that I started crocheting that day. And if I don't get to crochet that day, I feel like I'll just annotate the temperature of the middle of the day. So like midday or 1 p.m. and use that as the color for the days that I don't get to do it in the day. And outside like this small one here is the high temperature of the day. And the fourth color, the uh, brim one, like the very end one, is going to be one color for every single one. Um, this, I'm going to use a light cream color, like almost white color. I just prefer light things. I feel like it would be look good with blacks as well, but I just decided to do cream because I like cream. I like lighter colors. Um, so that is what I'll be doing. I, f I think it's going to be really nice because like every day is going to have a different combination. You know, uh, one day I might be um, crocheting at the coldest hour of the day. So I'll have like the same color of the middle and of the petals. But then the like the outer color is going to be different with the high temperatures. So maybe someday it's going to be the same temperature, the high temperature and the temperature that I'm currently crocheting at. I feel like it's going to be fun to do it like this and have like different colors for every single day, different combinations that I didn't think about. Like, and yeah, I think that's going to be really, really nice. Um, and I'm going to really, really like it. So, and it's going to like keep it fun, keep it interesting. In my opinion, this is just how I thought, you know, I thought of it and I thought, oh, this is a, actually a really nice idea. Um, I, I, I'll try to stick to it. Most people I see using between 10 to 12 colors um, and spreading the temperatures of where they leave through that color range. I chose 18 because I want to do this whole like three colors every day. Um, and I feel like it'd be cooler to like nicer to just have as many colors as I could for my specific design. I feel like if you're doing just stripes normally, you don't need this many colors as many as I'm using. You can just go by with like 10 or 12. Um, that being said, yeah, I'm using one uh, most days from um, 15 Celsius till 27 Celsius. I have one color for each temperature and then 28, 29 is one color, 20, uh, 30, 31 is one color and 22 plus is one color. It doesn't get much hotter than 22 here. Also, it doesn't get much colder than 11 Celsius here where I live. I have one bracket for less than 11 Celsius and then one from 12 to 14 and that is kind of it. I really did want to try and have as many different colors as I could. Yeah, um, about the layout of my blanket, because I'm not doing rolls, I had to come up with like a specific kind of configuration of like how I'm going to lay out the hexagons um, per day to make the blanket. So first I thought let's do weekly. Actually, first I thought let's do monthly, but that doesn't make sense because 
months don't have uh, same days, like same amount of days. Uh, months ago, you know, there's 31 that months and 30 months and there's February. So I was going to get really pissed if I did a 30, 31, 28 um, kind of lines in my hexagon blanket that would piss me off. So I just scrapped the idea of doing monthly um, and I decided to do weekly first. But then if I did weekly rolls, it would be like a, a scarf, it would be a, a yearly scarf, like a temperature scarf, because it would be skinny and long. So I decided to do every two weeks, I'll do a roll and then I will change, you know. It's a 14 um, hexagon line and then the next one's 14, 14, 14. And I will have a problem with that. I will have one extra day. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to put that at the very side of the last row. I'll just grab that one. I'll make it. I'll show it to the to someone who wants to see it, and I'll just leave it behind <laughs> because that will bother me. Trying to one like side hexagon, but that's the overall idea. Um, for my keeping up of the thing, you can do like as I said, you can do like a journal, like have a specific little notebook for that. You can put the yarns. Um, hole punch them to the sides and leave them there and just annotate the the temperature of the day every day um, on a physical notebook. I don't do physical notebooks. I cannot. It's not for me. So yeah, I'm doing it digitally. When you do digitally, you can do like a, an Excel spreadsheet with the information of the colors of your yarn um, and then the days information just have somewhere that you're going to keep up that information somewhere that is easily available for you for me I did a few things first of all I want to physically video log it so that will be the most important thing for me to like either take a photo or most likely what I want to do is like just film myself doing the little crochet talking about something how I'm feeling about it and you know what what the temperature is what the the day is and just have that logged in video and I'll post it somewhere just to keep track of it. Um, but I also want to, I created a couple, three separate graphs <laughs> because I'm a graph person. So first of all, I did an illustrator file with all, actually I have four things. So first of all, I have the illustrator file with the color, um, the colors for the, the temperatures. And I probably already showed that to you in the video um, that I'm putting on YouTube. But also, I have the color codes for the yarn that I chose for each temperature, where so if I need to repurchase the yarn. And then I have one gigantic file that's literally a one meter by one and a half meter file on Illustrator with all the individual hexagons made in vector that I can color in later. Um, so that I can keep track and like color that every day and that file is so heavy and probably going to crash my computer But anyway, I have that and I have um, Two separate little booklet files that I did on InDesign, I just really like doing this kind of stuff and log that in like a little booklet format um, Maybe I'll print it probably not but my idea is to go on that I will show you on screen what I'm talking about and fill out that, so fill out what the time of the day is, what the current um, temperature is, the low, the high. Um, I have a little forecast, um, little option that I did just for fun. That's just for the digital file. It doesn't have anything in the blanket, like there's nothing in the blanket that shows a forecast. The location, and then I have a little graph with the hexagon that I will be coloring in every day. And I have the the color options down there as well that I can um, blank like black out the colors that I'm not using and just leave the color that I'm using um, on display. I will show everything that I'm saying visually because I'm a visual person, I'm not a words person. So that is something that I want to use to log. It seems like a lot of work, but it's more of like a work for setup. When I'm doing it, it will take me like five minutes every day to like log all of those things that I'm talking about and then I have the same file but in like shorts format like in um phone format so that I can post it like do a little photo and I want to post a photo with it every day so in the like reels 
digital version I have, I get to post a photo in the back of it um, with that information in front of it. And in the booklet version, I get to um, put a photo beside it. So that's my idea of like keeping up. It is a lot, but as I said, this is like a whole fun project for me to do here on YouTube and on my social medias. Of course, you don't have to do all of that. Um, it's just for me, but you can follow along because I want to be recording it. So you can use this time to also get inspired to create something that you want. Maybe it's like a, a clothing, a drawing that you want to do, a puzzle, a crochet, the crochet blanket. As I feel like it's something to inspire people to just create a little bit every day. And I get to do that. I do feel like I will have time to do that. Maybe not, but hopefully, yes. Oh, I mentioned location in the, the booklet and the like stories thing. So the thing is, I feel like for most people, the temperature blanket is like a log of where they live and they're recording the temperature of a one specific location. As I've been saying for throughout this video, for me, the temperature blanket is more of like a daily chore, like a daily task that I want to accomplish this year. For most days as, my, as many as I can so for me it's more important for me to take all of my all of my yarns with me and log the day where I'm at and make that a part of the blanket than to just like do it as a temperature of the place that I live so and because this is like a hexagon that I get to crochet every day I don't need like say I'm going to my friend's house that leave like by the coast so they live by the beach that's where actually where I'm going to be in the very the couple of first couple of days for the project because I'm going to go there for a new year's um, party if I'm at their place the temperature there is different than it is where I live um, so I want to be logging the day like the temperature of where I am at not of where I'm from so in the the digital file I will be noting down the place where I'm at so where the temperature is at so yeah it's going to be very different from like a normal one you the the gradient might be different I, I don't really have any travel plan for this year but I want to travel so maybe you know I'll go from a different hemisphere to another and it's going to be a very different like what's happening in this crochet like temperature blanket but for me it's just all about like the crocheting every day um, and I'm using the temperature aspect of it as like a, a fun daily different thing that happens with the, this project. Um, let me show you my yarn. I didn't show it and I think it's just important. I forgot to do this. Uh, so I have a box <laughs> of yarn. I hope you can see it. And how I did it, I'm sure this is going to start um, ripping apart, but I'll just redo it. So I'm someone who takes my yarn from the middle. And oops, one, one fell. And what I did is I noted down the temperature. I hope you can see it. It's in like a metallic pen, so you might not be able to see it. But I had the temperature um, noted down as well as the color code for the yarn. And I just stringed it through with like another yarn. I just passed it in the inside. And I will be cutting, cutting? I will be getting the yarn from the middle here that you see. But I have the information in the yarn, skein of yarn. So I feel like that's really good. I did it for all of my yarns. Um, and I'm going to show you an overview of that. And I think that is it. Let me know when you're watching this. If you're watching it in the beginning of January, February, any month in this year, you can always catch up. You know, you can always do a couple of days of like batch knitting and catch up to me and uh, start crocheting, knitting, creating something with me. I will try my best to post as much as I can. And I'll see how it works. Let me know definitely if you're watching this and you want to follow along. How is a preferred uh, way for you to catch up? So I'm originally thinking of posting videos daily here. Um, not too edited obviously because I don't have time to edit a lot. But you know post shortish videos of just me crocheting. And talk to you, uh, to you guys about it. Maybe I'm thinking of doing lives either here on YouTube or maybe on Twitch. I've never used Twitch so I don't know <laughs> if that would work out. Maybe just a little reminder um like a little catch up on a uh, shorts or tiktok so like this is what my crochet looks today and just like showing you that i did it this day i really want to you know do it every day and keep myself accountable let me know if you're watching this from the future let me know if i finished it let me know how i'm doing if i gave up all completely like if you're watching this in like august and i just gave up and you're like bestie you're not doing it anymore. I'm sorry to tell you but it's really funny watching this from the future because you just kind of gave up
<laughs> very embarrassing or like if I completed it maybe you're watching this next year um and you completed it or I completed it or we completed it <laughs> let me know um yeah but if you're watching this in real time or maybe in January or February um definitely follow along with me and let me know you know how you're doing and how your crochet project um is going and your crochet projects for this year I've been talking for way too long and I need to stop so this is it um, I will leave my social medias down here um, on the screen and also on the description as a link so you can go and follow me on those because I might be catching up in those separate social medias um, as well as the link for the African flower crochet hexagon and that is it Subscribe if you can, if you want, really, pretty please like this video, comment down below what your thoughts and opinions are about my idea, a little kind of different um, temperature blanket um, and what you are going to do for this next year as a crochet knit project or maybe just something creative project. Let me know. And bye bye. <laughs>